On June 18, 2023, tragedy unfolded in the depths of the North Atlantic Ocean. The Ocean Gate submarine, known as the Titan, embarked on a historic voyage to the iconic wreck of the Titanic. However, what was meant to be an adventurous expedition turned into a devastating catastrophe. A sinister and ominous event took place, with all five passengers on board perishing in a devastating, catastrophic implosion. As the world watched in shock, new details of the incident slowly emerged. Among the passengers was Stockton Rush, the CEO and founder of OceanGate Expeditions, the company that operated the submersible. Stockton Rush was an American businessman and engineer, best known for his role as the co-founder and CEO of OceanGate. He dedicated his life to unraveling the mysteries of the deep sea and was a visionary explorer. With his passion for exploration, Rush led numerous submarine expeditions and made significant contributions to deep sea exploration. On March 31, 1962, Rush was born in San Francisco, California and grew up in a wealthy family. At a young age, he developed an interest in aviation and water sports, and he dreamed of becoming an astronaut and being the first person to travel to Mars. His passions led him to start deep sea diving at age 12, and at 18 he succeeded in obtaining his commercial pilot's license. After graduating from Princeton University, Rush started his career with McDonnell Douglas as a test pilot for the F-15 program. He worked closely with the team to test and improve the aircraft. His expertise and dedication made him a valuable member of the team. Rush then continued his career with Blue View Technologies and the Museum of Flight, where he held various positions. His knowledge and experience in aviation and technology grew, and he contributed to several projects and initiatives within the industry. Unfortunately, Rush later received news that his eyesight made him unfit to become a military pilot, forcing him to reconsider his dreams of serving as a pilot. Despite this setback, Rush did not get discouraged and continued his passion for exploration. In 2009, Rush co-founded OceanGate, a company dedicated to deep-sea exploration with Guillermo Sonlein. This marked an important turning point in his career using his vision and knowledge to create a company that sought to unravel the mysteries of the deep sea. Although Sonline left the company in 2013, Rush continued his work as the only founder of OceanGate. Joining Rush on this historic journey was Hamish Harding, a pilot and adventurer who made significant contributions to the field of exploration. He was born George Hamish Livingston Harding on June 24, 1964 in London, United Kingdom. Harding grew up with a passion for aviation and space exploration. At the age of 13, he joined the Air Training Corps and began flying chipmunk aircraft. He received his education at the King's School in Gloucester and later attended Pembroke College, Cambridge, where he earned a degree in natural science and chemical engineering. Harding's career and adventures took him to different heights and depths. In the 1990s, he worked in information technology and was a director of Logica India. In 2004, he founded Action Aviation, an international aircraft brokerage based in Dubai, of which he became chairman. He also founded Action Group, an organization focused on aviation and exploration. As an adventurer, Harding set numerous records and achieved remarkable feats. He visited the South Pole multiple times, descended to the Challenger Deep of the Mariana Trench, and even traveled to space. In July 2019, he served as the crew pilot for the record-breaking flight mission called One More Orbit. Harding held three Guinness World Records for his remarkable accomplishments. His presence aboard the Titan created a sense of excitement and anticipation for what was to come. They were accompanied by Shahzada Dawood, a prominent Pakistani businessman, and his son Suleiman Dawood. Shahzada was a British-Pakistani businessman who was born on February 12, 1975, in Rawalpindi, Pakistan. He held several prominent positions in the business world, including Vice Chairman of Engro Corporation, a conglomerate involved in agriculture, energy, and telecommunications. He was also a director of the Dawood Hercules Corporation, one of Pakistan's largest fertilizer companies. Shahzada Dawood was known for his work in renewable energy and technology. He was also involved in charity work and was a trustee of the Dawood Foundation, an organization focused on access to education in Pakistan. Shahzada Dawood was a valued member of society, and his family was recognized as one of the wealthiest business families in Pakistan. Suleiman Dawood, the 19-year-old son of Shahzada Dawood, was a student in London. He studied at the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow. Suleiman Dawood was interested in science fiction literature and enjoyed learning new things. He was also an avid volleyball player. 
Suleiman planned to join his father's business activities after college. Suleiman was initially reticent and afraid to join the deep-sea expedition to investigate the wreck of the Titanic, but he eventually agreed to the trip as a gesture to please his father, who was fascinated by the history of the sunken ship. Besides, it was Father's Day weekend. Last but not least, the group was joined by Paul-Henri Narjolet, a French maritime expert with a wealth of experience in deep-sea exploration. Born on 2 March 1946 in chamonix mont blanc savoie France, Narjolet started his career in the French Navy, where he served as an officer specializing in mine clearance, diving, and deep underwater intervention from 1964 to 1986. He had notable achievements during his military service, including being appointed commander of the Groupement des Plongeurs de Monny de Chabot, responsible for finding and neutralizing underground mines, and piloting intervention submarines as part of the Undersea Intervention Group. After leaving the French Navy, Narjolet dedicated his expertise to underwater research and exploration. He became the director of underwater research for RMS Titanic, the company that owns the salvage rights to the Titanic wreck. Narjolet made numerous successful dives to the site of the Titanic, recovering artifacts and contributing to the understanding of the ship's history. He also authored the book, In the Depths of the Titanic, which offers insights into his experiences exploring the famous shipwreck. Narjolet was a highly respected expert on Titanic research. His knowledge and contributions resulted in important discoveries, including the extraordinary abysmal ecosystem near the Titanic wreck and the recovery of rare artifacts at that location. As a legendary submarine pilot, his work had a major impact on our understanding of Titanic's history and the deep sea environment. With more than 35 dives to the Titanic wreck, Narjolet was a leading authority on the subject. His expertise and invaluable knowledge contributed significantly to the expedition and provided valuable insights about the historic site they were about to explore. On April 21, 2021, OceanGate Expedition tweeted that they were making preparations. This tweet was reportedly later deleted. They wrote, We've been working hard to get ready for our 2023 Titanic expedition that begins next month. We moved at OceanGate Sub Titan to the launch at the At Marine Institute for final preparations. The launch has brand new facilities with everything we need to prepare for expedition. All occupants were on board. The expedition was scheduled to depart from St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. On June 17, 2023, Hamish proudly announced on Facebook that he had joined OceanGate Expeditions, which set out to find the Titanic. I am proud to finally announce that I joined OceanGate Expeditions for their RMS Titanic mission as a mission specialist on the sub going down to the Titanic. Due to the worst winter in Newfoundland in 40 years, this mission is likely to be the first and only manned mission to the Titanic in 2023. A weather window has just opened up, and we are going to attempt a dive tomorrow. We started steaming from St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada yesterday and are planning to start dive operations around 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. Until then, we have a lot of preparations and briefings to do. The team on the sub has a couple of legendary explorers, some of which have done over 30 dives to the RMS Titanic since the 1980s, including P.H. Narjolet. More expedition updates to follow, if the weather holds, he wrote. On Sunday, June 18, 2023, the time had finally come. According to the U.S. Coast Guard, the descent to the Titanic wreck began with a four-hour delay. Instead of the original plan to start around 4 a.m., they started at 8 a.m. For two hours, they descended to a depth of nearly 4,000 meters to reach the Titanic's wreck. About one hour and 45 minutes after beginning its descent, at 9.45 a.m., the submarine and surface ship lost communication with each other. The U.S. Coast Guard had expected the Titan to resurface around 3 p.m., but this did not happen as planned. At 5.40 p.m., the Coast Guard received a report of a trailing 21-foot submarine from the Canadian research vessel Polar Prince, with five people on board. They were also on their way to view the wreck of the Titanic. On Monday, June 19, 2023, U.S. and Canadian ships and aircraft searched the area, some deploying sonar buoys capable of measuring to a depth of 3,962 meters. According to U.S. Coast Guard Vice Admiral John Mauger, the area was remote and challenging to conduct a search operation. Officials had also asked commercial vessels for help. In addition, it was reported that if the submarine was intact, it was estimated to have between 70 and 96 hours of oxygen. So this is an incredibly complex site there. 
You have to remember that it's the wreck site of the Titanic, so there is a lot of metal and different objects that are in the water around this site. That's why it's so important that we've engaged experts from the Navy that understand the science behind noise and can classify or give us better information about what the source of that noise may be. In the meantime, it's something. It's a target. It's a focus for us to look at, John said. On Tuesday, June 20th, 2023 at 10 a.m., France announced it would assist in the search by deploying the ship Atalante, equipped with a deep-sea submarine. The ship was scheduled to arrive late Wednesday. Sounds were detected throughout the day by Canadian Lockheed P-3 Orion aircraft, which are equipped with equipment to detect submarines. According to several news outlets, periodic popping sounds were observed at 30-minute intervals. On Wednesday, June 21st, 2023, a joint command was established by the U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Navy, Canadian Coast Guard, and the Ocean Gate Expeditions to lead the search operation. The U.S. Coast Guard confirmed at 2 a.m. that Canadian P-3 aircraft had detected underwater sounds. They immediately sent ROVs, remotely operated vehicles, to the affected area. These ROVs have been deployed for the purpose of exploring the area, collecting visual data, and finding possible clues that could help understand the cause or locate the source of the sounds. In addition, the ROVs could be equipped with various sensors and instruments to collect specific data, such as temperature, pressure, chemical composition, and so on. The collected data were then forwarded to naval experts for further analysis and evaluation. These experts studied the data closely to gain a deeper understanding of the situation and determine the next steps in the search and rescue operation. We need to have hope, but I can't tell you what the noises are. What I can tell you is we're searching where the noises are, and that's all we can do at this point, said Jamie Frederick, a captain in the U.S. Coast Guard. At 4.09 a.m., Explorers Club President Richard Garriott shared a message on Twitter about the ongoing investigation into the Titan submersible. We are so grateful for the U.S. Coast Guard and other international teams and commercial operators doing everything they can to help find the Titanic Expedition submersible, he said. At 1 p.m. that afternoon, additional underwater sounds were observed, although the sounds were not clear enough. As a result, the search area was expanded to twice the size of Connecticut, according to the U.S. Coast Guard. By late Wednesday, further vessels arrived, among them a French research vessel equipped with a deep-sea submersible. These ships would play a role in the complex response effort that would encompass the extensive region. An extensive international search and rescue mission had been underway since Sunday night, involving U.S. military aircraft and ships, the Royal Navy and private companies, reported Jamie Frederick, captain of the U.S. Coast Guard. Despite aerial searches and the use of remotely operated vehicles, have yielded negative results, Frederick added. This is a search and rescue mission 100%, Frederick said. We are smack dab in the middle of search and rescue, and we'll continue to put every available asset that we have in an effort to find the Titan and crew members. The oxygen, that's just one piece of data, but that's not the only thing that's important. Sometimes you're in a position where you have to make a tough decision, but we're not there yet. If we continue to search, potentially we could be at that point. That's a discussion that we will have with the families long before I'm going to discuss that in public. Frederick declined to comment on the survival prospects of the crew or discuss any potential conclusion of the operation. According to the U.S. Coast Guard estimate, there was a critical deadline at 6 a.m. on Thursday, June 22nd. By that time, the submarine is expected to run out of oxygen. According to specifications, the vessel had a 96-hour supply from the time it is sealed. However, the exact time will depend on the intactness of the vessel and other factors, such as the availability of power in the icy depths. Around 8 a.m., two remotely operated vehicles were deployed as part of the search operation. Experts indicated that it was still uncertain whether the submarine was on the surface or on the seafloor. They warned that weeks of intensive searching could be needed to determine its exact location. At 11 a.m., a Canadian naval vessel arrived at the site, with a medical team specializing in diving medicine on board. Exactly at 11.48 a.m., the U.S. Coast Guard reported the discovery of a debris field in the search area by a remotely operated vehicle in the vicinity of the Titanic's wreckage. At 4 p.m., Vice Admiral John Mauger, commander of the 1st Coast Guard District, declared that the five crew members aboard the Titan had most likely perished instantly from a catastrophic implosion. 
The confirmation came after a remote-controlled vehicle detected the Titan's tail cone, and the discovered debris indicated a catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. Officials had reported the discovery of a large debris field containing five major parts of the ship near the wreck of the Titanic, about 400 miles south of St. John's, Newfoundland. The specific parts of the Titan found in the debris field included a landing frame and a rear cover of the submarine. The debris is consistent with a catastrophic implosion of the pressure chamber, Rear Admiral John Mauger told reporters. Upon this determination, we immediately notified the families. On behalf of the United States Coast Guard and the entire Unified Command, I offer my deepest condolences to the families. I can only imagine what this has been like for them, and I hope that this discovery provides some solace during this difficult time," he said. OceanGate, the company in charge of the expedition, confirmed that all five passengers aboard the missing Titan submarine had tragically perished in a catastrophic implosion. The U.S. Coast Guard confirmed also the fatal accident of the passengers and said the debris found in the submarine was consistent with the loss of the pressure chamber. We at the OceanGate Foundation are devastated by the tragic news about our friends and colleagues. We are keeping them and their loved ones in our thoughts and in our hearts. We wish to acknowledge the efforts of all the individuals and organizations involved in the valiant search for Titan and its crew and appreciate the expressions of sympathy from people around the world for this terrible loss," a spokesperson said. Prior to the incident with the missing Titan submarine, OceanGate had passengers sign a waiver describing the risks of the expedition. The waiver emphasized the experimental nature of the submarine and the use of materials not commonly used in other submarines. It highlighted the possibility of death as one of the risks. In addition, the statement stated that the Titan submarine had not been certified or approved by regulatory agencies. Former passenger Mike Reese said, You sign a massive waiver that lists one way after another that you could die on the trip. They mention death three times on page one, so it's never far from your mind. Safety concerns about the Titan submarine were not limited to the passenger waiver. In 2018, a former OceanGate employee, David Lockridge, who was Director of Marine Operations, raised safety concerns about the ship in an inspection report. The report identified numerous problems that posed serious safety risks, including problems with hull testing and the potential dangers to passengers if the submarine reached extreme depths. According to Lockridge, his warnings were ignored, and he was subsequently fired by the company. Furthermore, a documentary cameraman who had gone on a test dive aboard the Titan submersible revealed that OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush had made a chilling comment when asked about potential emergencies, stating, Well, you're dead anyway. This unsettling response raised concerns about safety practices and added to the uneasiness surrounding the test dive. In addition, industry experts and deep-sea exploration professionals have also raised concerns about OceanGate's experimental approach and lack of a traditional assessment for the Titan submarine, in a letter to OceanGate in 2018, they warned that this approach could potentially lead to catastrophic problems with the Titanic mission. The U.S. Navy reservist, Dan Miles, was independently hired as a consultant to evaluate OceanGate's Titan submersible in 2021. In his report, Miles compared the risk of taking a dive in the submersible to that of a test pilot putting a new aircraft through its paces. He stated that the risk incurred was roughly comparable to the risks involved in testing a new aircraft. Miles acknowledged the concerns raised by OceanGate regarding the risks and considered them as sincere warnings of worst-case outcomes, rather than merely legal jargon required for insurance purposes. He recognized the innovative and controversial nature of the submersible's carbon fiber and titanium pressure hull. The use of composite materials in seawater at high pressure raised well-founded engineering concerns. Despite these concerns, Miles concluded in his report that he would have no reservation taking the submersible down to the Titanic wreck site. His assessment was based on the trust built through communication and demonstration of operations during his evaluation. He highlighted the importance of meeting expected milestones and carefully weighing the various risks discussed. It is essential to recognize that while Miles expressed confidence in the submersible's capabilities, there were differing perspectives on the safety of the Titan submersible. Other safety concerns were raised by former employees, industry experts, and individuals who opted not to proceed with their planned filming expedition due to safety concerns. The combination of the passenger's waiver, 
the safety concerns raised by the former employee and industry experts and the diverging assessments of the submersible safety provides a broader understanding of the circumstances surrounding the risks involved in the expedition. These factors highlight the importance of thorough safety evaluations and adherence to established standards in any deep sea exploration endeavor. It is crucial to consider the differing perspectives and evaluations of safety associated with the submersible. Furthermore, the confirmation of the passengers' deaths and the circumstances surrounding the implosion of the submersible have brought immense sadness and grief to their families and the broader community involved in the expedition. This tragic incident serves as a stark reminder of the inherent risks associated with deep sea exploration. It underscores the significance of prioritizing safety measures and implementing robust protocols to ensure the well-being of individuals involved in such endeavors. Deep sea exploration ventures should always strive to maintain the highest standards of safety to mitigate risks effectively and protect the lives of those participating in these challenging expeditions. According to the latest updates, the remains found, along with other evidence from the submarine, have been recovered and will be analyzed by U.S. medical professionals to better understand the factors that led to the catastrophic implosion. The investigation into the sinking of the Titan submarine is ongoing and is being led by the U.S. Coast Guard and a Naval Board of Investigation. The Board of Investigation is currently gathering evidence, interviewing witnesses, and preparing for an anticipated public hearing for additional testimony. The goal is to gain a full understanding of the circumstances surrounding the implosion and to prevent similar tragedies in the future. Pelagic Research Services, the group responsible for retrieving the debris from the ocean floor, has successfully completed offshore work. They plan to hold a news conference at their operating base in East Aurora, New York, once their team is regrouped. Thanks for watching this story. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on your notification bell to stay updated on more similar videos. We would love to hear your thoughts, so feel free to share your comments below. Until next time!